Larry Z. Bisco. Lawrence Whistler, born December 5, 1951, better known by the ring name Larry Z. Bisco, is an American retired professional wrestler and author perhaps best known for his feud with his mentor, Bruno Sammartino, during the early 1980s. Among other accolades, he is a two-time AWA World Heavyweight Champion, and the final title holder. Z. Bisco was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame on March 28, 2015. Wrestling Career Worldwide Wrestling Federation slash World Wrestling Federation, 1973-1981 Whistler trained under Bruno Sammartino after cutting his collegiate wrestling career at Penn State University short. He debuted in 1973 as the babyface Larry Z. Bisco, with his name a tribute to 1920s Polish-American wrestler Stanislaus Z. Bisco. He initially wrestled in the Pittsburgh area, appearing on the local wrestling program Studio Wrestling, before receiving bookings in Vancouver. He spent three years in the World Wide Wrestling Federation before traveling to California in 1975. Z. Bisco was one of the attractions in the 1976 Latin America Wrestling Alliance World Heavyweight Championship, held in Guatemala City, under Jose Azari Promotions. Three days after the end of the tournament, Mil Mascaras won the title, defeating Jose Azari in the final, an earthquake destroyed much of that Central American nation. Z. Bisco returned to the WWWF in 1976 and formed a tag team with Tony Garia with whom he won the WWWF World Tag Team Championships on November 21, 1978 in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Their reign lasted until March 6, 1979, when they were defeated by the Valiant Brothers in Allentown. Z. Bice co-feuded with Bugsy McGraw, Abdullah the Butcher and superstar Billy Graham in addition to wrestling killer Kowalski and Baron Michael C. Kluna. In 1978 he summarized his mat-based ring work with the statement, I just believe in science over brawn. At the end of the decade, Z. Bisco became frustrated with his inability to shed his label as Bruno Sammartino's protégé. He challenged Sammartino to an exhibition match, claiming this was the only way he could step out of Sammartino's shadow. Sammartino eventually agreed to the match after Z. Bisco threatened to retire if he was not granted the match. The trainer and pupil faced one another in Allentown on January 22, 1980, with Sammartino dominating the early stages of the match. After Sammartino threw him out of the ring, an irate Zbysko seized a wooden chair and struck Sammartino, leaving him in a pool of blood in the middle of the ring and instantly turning Zbysko into a reviled heel. So despised was Zbysko by partisan Sammartino fans in the Northeast that his car was repeatedly damaged and taxis in which he was traveling were overturned by fans. Zbysko was struck with an iron pole following a match with Ivan Putski, and was stabbed in the buttock following a match with Pedro Morales in the Washington Avenue Armory in Albany, New York. After turning against Sammartino, Zbysko was approached by the WWWF's unholy trio of managers, Fred Blassie, the Grand Wizard, and Captain Lou Albano, but he decided to continue wrestling without a manager. Sammartino and Z. Bisco fought one another repeatedly in a lengthy feud that stretched throughout 1980. In the course of the feud, Z. Bisco began referring to himself as the New Living Legend, a reference to Sammartino, who was often addressed as the Living Legend. The feud culminated in a steel cage match at Showdown at Shea at Shea Stadium in Flushing, New York on August 9, 1980 that saw Sammartino defeat Z. Bisco in front of an audience of 36,295. National Wrestling Alliance, 1981-1983 Z. Bisco left the WWF in 1981 and feuded with Bruno's son David Sammartino on the independent circuit. He eventually joined the Georgia Championship Wrestling Territory of the National Wrestling Alliance, where he began claiming to have retired Bruno Sammartino. Sammartino had retired from full-time competition in 1981. Zbysko initially feuded with Tim Woods and Paul Orndorff, whom he was unable to defeat for the NWA National Heavyweight Championship. After killer Tim Brooks defeated Orndorff for the title on March 20, 1983, 
Zibsko immediately offered him $25,000 US dollars for the title, which Brooks accepted. His reign lasted until April 30 of that year, when NWA President Bob Geigel stripped Zibisko of the title due to the manner in which he had acquired it. A tournament was held for the vacant title, which Zibisko entered. He defeated Mr. Wrestling 2 in the tournament final on May 6, 1983 in Atlanta, Georgia to regain the title. His second reign lasted until September 25, 1983, when he lost to Brett Wayne in Atlanta. American Wrestling Association, 1984-1987 In March 1984, Zbysko joined the Minneapolis, Minnesota-based American Wrestling Association. He was awarded the newly created AWA Americas Championship in January 1985, and engaged in a lengthy feud with Sergeant Slaughter, who defeated him for the title on June 21, 1985 in Chicago, Illinois. Throughout the feud, Zbysko drew the ire of fans by fleeing the ring and stalling for minutes at a time whenever Slaughter gained an advantage. In an April 2004 interview, Zbysko claimed that the longest he ever stalled for was 16 minutes. Zbysko feuded with Nick Bockwinkel throughout 1986, losing to him in a Texas death match at Rage in a Cage on April 28, 1986. In the course of the feud, he also vied with Bockwinkel's ally Ray Stevens and boxer Scott Ledoux. Zbysko lost to Ledoux in a boxing match at Wrestle Rock 86 on April 20, 1986 and fought him to a double count out at Battle by the Bay on June 28, 1986. On May 2, 1987, Zbysko helped Kurt Hennig defeat Nick Bockwinkel for the AWA World Heavyweight Championship by handing him a roll of dimes to knock Bockwinkel out with. He was suspended for life by the AWA as a result of an assault on Bockwinkel during Bockwinkel's rematch with Hennig in July 1987. As Bockwinkel retired shortly after the incident, Zbysko began claiming to have retired both Bockwinkel and Bruno Sammartino. National Wrestling Alliance, 1987-1989 In November 1987, Zbysko joined Jim Crockett Promotions, where he was managed by Baby Doll. He began feuding with Barry Windham, and on January 24, 1988 in Uniondale, New York he defeated Windham for the NWA Western States Heritage Championship. After Baby Doll left Zbysko he gained a new manager in Gary Hart, who placed him in a tag team with Al Perez. Perez and Zbysko feuded with Kendall Windham and Dustin Rhodes. It was also during this time that Hart was asking for NWA world title shots for both Zbysko and Perez. It was claimed by Hart and even announcer Jim Ross that Zbysko and Perez both had the ability to beat Flair for the title, but neither received title shots and the NWA quickly dropped the overtures. Crockett Promotions was under new ownership and both Zbysko and Perez were essentially left without an angle. Zbysko signed with the AWA in January 1989 and the NWA Western States Heritage Championship, which Zbysko still held at that point, was subsequently retired. American Wrestling Association, 1989-1990 Zbysko took part in an 18-man battle royal in St. Paul, Minnesota on February 7, 1989 to fill the vacant AWA World Heavyweight Championship. By stalling and avoiding confrontations with other wrestlers, Zbysko was able to remain in the match until only two men remained, himself and Tom Zenk. The two men fought for several minutes. When Zenk went for a pin, referee Gary Derisha inexplicably entered the ring to make the count. Zbysko kicked out and the two continued in what now appeared to be a conventional wrestling match. Derisha ended up taking a bump and was unable to make the three count when Zenk covered Zbysko for the pin. As Derisha slowly recovered, Zenk continued to dominate the match. As he attempted a flying body press, however, Zbysko managed to catch him in midair and deliver a fallaway slam, throwing him over the top rope and to the ground below. Zbysko was thus the new AWA World Heavyweight Champion. Early in his title reign, Zbysko would feud with Wahoo McDaniel and Sergeant Slaughter. He would face Greg Gagne on June 23, 1989 at War in the Windy City, and David Sammartino, who he defeated at the Tri-State Winter Challenge on January 27, 1990. 
He then began feuding with Mr. Sato, who defeated him for the AWA World Heavyweight Championship on February 10, 1990 at NJPW Super Fight in the Tokyo Dome during a tour of Japan. Zbys Co regained the title at Super Clash 4 on April 8, 1990, in St. Paul and successfully defended it against the Trooper, Brad Rangans, and Nikita Koloff, who he defeated on May 5, 1990 at Twin Wars 90, toward the end of his reign. He was stripped of the title after leaving the AWA for World Championship Wrestling on December 12, 1990, and the AWA declared bankruptcy in 1991 making Zbysko the last man to reign as AWA World Heavyweight Champion. World Championship Wrestling, 1990-2000 In December 1990, Zbysko returned to the NWA. Zbysko initially teamed with Terence Taylor, a member of the York Foundation, but was not recruited to the stable. Zbysko was paired with Arn Anderson as the enforcers in the late summer of 1991. After Scott Steiner, one half of the World Tag Team Champions, was injured, the titles were vacated on July 18, 1991, and placed on the line in an eight-man tag team tournament. The tournament finals were held on September 5, 1991 at Clash of the Champions 16, Fall Brawl and pitted the enforcers against Rick Steiner and Bill Kazmaier. At the outset of the event, the enforcers struck Kazmaier with a weight during a weightlifting demonstration, injuring his ribs. This enabled them to defeat Steiner and Kazmaier for the titles in the main event. At Halloween Havoc, the enforcers began feuding with Barry Windham and Dustin Rhodes, and broke Windham's hand by slamming the door of his car on his hand. Following this act, Zbys Co. gave himself the sobriquet The Cruncher. Windham was replaced by Ricky Steamboat, and at Clash of the Champions 17 on November 19, 1991 in Savannah, Georgia, the enforcers lost the titles to Steamboat and Rhodes. In December 1991, the enforcers joined Paul E. Dangerously's Dangerous Alliance, which also included Rick Rude, stunning Steve Austin, Bobby Eaton, and Medusa. They feuded with Ricky Steamboat, Dustin Rhodes, Barry Windham, Nikita Koloff, Sting, and the WCW World Heavyweight Champion Ron Simmons. On May 17, 1992 at WrestleWar 1992, War Games, the Dangerous Alliance lost a War Games match to their rivals after Zbys Co. accidentally hit Eden in the arm with the turnbuckle that he had dismantled, forcing Eden to submit as a result of the pain. As a result of his blunder, Zbys Co. was fired from the stable by Dangerously, turning him into a face for the first time since 1980. He briefly feuded with Austin and Eden before retiring from full-time competition to become a color commentator. One of his first appearances as a commentator occurred at Starcade alongside of Missy Hyatt. As a commentator, Zbys Co. began referring to himself simply as the living legend, as many WCW fans were unfamiliar with his feud with Bruno Sammartino. He also hosted an interview segment, Larry Z's Legends on WCW television which only lasted a few weeks. In March 1994, Zbys Co. began hosting WCW Pro, alongside Dusty Rhodes and Gordon Soley. Shortly thereafter, Lord Steven Regal began harassing Zbys Co., prompting him to return to the ring. On May 2, 1994 in Atlanta, Zbys Co. defeated Regal for the WCW World Television Championship. He held the title until June 23, 1994 when Regal regained the belt in Charleston, South Carolina. In 1996, Zbys Co. was promoted to the WCW Monday Nitro broadcast team, where he announced during the first hour with Tony Schiavone. In 1997, he was antagonized by New World Order NWO, member Scott Hall, but Hall opted not to face Zbys Co. Zbys Co. remained in the broadcast booth for most of 1997 occasionally refereeing matches involving Hall and the NWO. On October 13, 1997, Zbys Co. got involved in a WCW Tag Team Championship match between the Steiner brothers and Scott Hall and SYXX, subbing for an injured Kevin Nash, and counted the ensuing fall for the Steiner brothers who became the champions. This reign was official despite Zbys Co. not being an official referee, 
a role he previously played in Scott Hall's match against Lex Luger at Halloween Havoc, 1997. On December 28, 1997 at Starcade 1997, Zbys co-returned to the ring for a match against Bischoff for control of WCW Monday Nitro with Bret Hart acting as special referee. Hart ensured that the NWO did not interfere, and Zbys co won the match, regaining control of Nitro for WCW. He continued to feud with Hall and his lackey, Louis Spicali, culminating in a match between Zbys co and Hall at Sold Out 1998 on January 24, 1998. Zbys Co won the match by disqualification after Dusty Rhodes betrayed him, joining the NWO. Zbys Co went back to commentating, becoming part of the main WCW Thunder announced team in April along with Mike Tenney, leaving WCW Nitro. On December 6, 1999, when he faced Kurt Hennig in a retirement match on Nitro and lost. He returned in January 2000 as a member of the Old Age Outlaws with Terry Funk, Arn Anderson and Paul Orndorff to feud with the revived NWO, then returned to commentary in February until he was released from his WCW contract in late 2000. Independent Circuit, 2001-2005 After being released from World Championship Wrestling Z Bisco was rumored to be the replacement for Jerry Lawler as the commentator for Monday Night Raw in early 2001 after Lawler quit the company. Z Bisco did an interview with Live Audio Wrestling saying he wanted the job. These rumors never materialized as Paul Heyman would go on to become the color commentator for Monday Night Raw until Jerry Lawler returned to the company later that year. In 2001 Z Bisco wrestled several matches for Dusty Rhodes's Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling promotion. In late 2001, Z Bisco requested that World Wrestling Entertainment cease referring to Chris Jericho as the living legend, claiming that this infringed upon his common law trademark. After WWF refused to comply, with Chairman Vince McMahon personally addressing Jericho as the living legend during a televised broadcast, Z Bisco launched a lawsuit against WWF. In addition, he challenged McMahon to a shoot fight during a 2002 World Wrestling All-Stars pay-per-view. In 2002, Z Bisco had a short feud with Chris Harris in the Nashville, Tennessee-based USA Championship Wrestling promotion. On March 2, 2002, Z Bisco defeated Harris for the USA North American Heavyweight Championship. He held the title until March 30, 2002 when Harris regained the belt at the Tojo Yamamoto Memorial Show. On August 27, 2005 at Wrestle Reunion in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, Z Bisco faced Diamond Dallas Page with the provision that he would receive five minutes alone in the ring with the 69-year-old Bruno Sammartino if he won. Page knocked Z Bisco out with his signature diamond cutter, however, then pulled Z Bisco on top of him, thus giving him the win by pinfall. Sammartino then entered the ring and began throttling the still-prone Z Bisco until he was dragged away. Total Non-Stop Action Wrestling, 2003-2006 Z Bisco debuted in Total Non-Stop Action Wrestling on January 15, 2003 and delivered a speech in which he exhorted the roster to respect tradition. This sparked a feud with AJ Styles, who was not receptive to Z Bisco's requests. On January 29, 2003 Z Bisco faced Styles in a 10-minute long match with the stipulation that, should Styles be unable to pin him twice in that time, he would become Styles's manager. Styles was only able to pin Z Bisco once, and Z Bisco managed him for a short time before Booker Vince Russo cancelled the angle and Z Bisco left the promotion. He returned for one night on August 6, 2003, losing to Kid Cash following interference from Abyss. Z Bisco made a full time return to TNA on June 23, 2004, assisting Ron Killings in his feud with Jeff Jarrett. On July 14, 2004, Killings, Z Bisco, Dusty Rhodes, Conan and BG James defeated Jarrett, Ken Shamrock and The Elite Guard, Sean Hernandez, Chad Collier and Onyx, in a 10-man guitar on a pole match. Along with Harley Race and Terry Funk, Z Bisco was appointed to a body known as the Championship Committee. 
the committee would watch matches on TNA Impact, most of which had a 10-minute time limit, and determine a winner in the eventuality of a draw. As on practice few professional wrestling matches end in a draw, the committee was gradually phased out. In February 2005, Zbyce co-joined Planet Jarrett, Jarrett's dominant heel stable. He disappeared several weeks later. On June 19, 2005, at TNA Slammiversary 2005, the returning Zbyce co was named Director of Authority, replacing Dusty Rhodes. His first act as DOA was to give Jeff Jarrett's place in the King of the Mountain match later that night to Raven. At TNA Sacrifice 2005 on August 14, Zbyce Co responded to Jarrett's request for a shot at the NWA World Heavyweight Championship by informing him that he would receive a title shot if he won his tag team match that night, but would be banned from receiving a title shot for a year if he lost the match. As Jarrett's partner, Rhino, won the match, neither stipulation was applicable. Zbyce Co remained neutral for several months, but in October 2005 he became exasperated with Raven who continually accused him of robbing the NWA World Heavyweight Championship and refusing to grant him a rematch. At TNA Genesis 2005 on November 13, Zbyce Co. told Raven to resign from TNA or have his life made hell. After Raven refused to resign, Zbyce Co. forced him to wrestle PJ Polacco. Much to Zbyce chagrin, Raven defeated Polacco. Nevertheless, Zbyce Co. continued his personal crusade against Raven, and to that end booked him into a Raven's House of Fun match, again with an unknown opponent, for the December 3rd episode of Impact. The opponent turned out to be the entire Diamonds in the Rough stable, Simon Diamond, Ilix Skipper, and David Young. Despite interference from Cassidy Riley on Raven's behalf, he was pinned and lost the match. Raven went on to defeat his former tag team partner Chris K at TNA Turning Point 2005. At Final Resolution 2006 on January 15, 2006, Raven was scheduled to face a mystery opponent, with the stipulation that he would receive a shot at the NWA World Heavyweight Championship if he was victorious, but would be fired if he was defeated. Raven lost to the returning Sean Waltman after Z Bisco who refereed the match after the original referee was knocked unconscious, distracted Raven so that Waltman could deliver a X-Factor and then counted to three despite Raven placing his foot on a ring rope. Following the match, Zbyce Co. ordered the TNA security to escort Raven from my arena, then mocked Raven until he was confronted by Jackie Gata about an undisclosed issue. At TNA Lockdown 2006 on April 23, 2006, the debuting Christy Hem handed commentator Mike Tina an envelope containing a message from TNA management stating that Zbyce Co. had been placed on probation due to his conduct, while Raven had been reinstated. Raven then entered the arena and approached the ring, causing Zbyce Co. to evade him until he was removed by security guards. At TNA Victory Road 2006 on July 17, 2006, Zbyce Co. lost to Raven in a hair vs. hair match. On the October 5th edition of Impact he booked a match where the man who was pinned would be fired. He interfered in the match after he hit Eric Young with a golf club. Jim Cornette booked a match at Bound for Glory between him and Young where the loser would be fired. He would then go on to lose the match to Eric Young at Bound for Glory, he was fired a week later. Return to the Independent Circuit, 2007-2012 Zbyce Co. returned to the independent circuit and claimed the AWA Superstars of Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship and AWA Superstars of Wrestling. Zbyce Co. started rallying for what he claimed was rightfully his since mid-2007. The situation heated up immediately after the then AWA Superstars of Wrestling Board of Directors stripped Masato Tanaka of the world's title. Zbyce Co., through his newly named representative Mr. St. Laurent and legal representation, started filing documentation, to the new AWA Superstars of Wrestling Management team, proving he had never lost the title in 1991 when Vern Gagnes American Wrestling Association entered into bankruptcy. After considerable deliberation and review of the bankruptcy file from the early 90s, the AWA agreed with Zbyce Co. that he did indeed never actually lose the title. Accordingly, 
Z Bisco was once again the recognized AWA superstars of Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. He lost the title to Brian Logan. Logan defeated Larry Z Bisco and Ricky Landell in a three way match on April 18, 2008, at a Mountaineer Wrestling Association event in Fayetteville, West Virginia. On March 22, 2008, Larry was inducted into the XWF Hall of Fame by its creator Jack Blaze at their XWF March Madness 2008 event. XWF was later renamed LPW, Legends Pro Wrestling, where Larry is still honored in their Hall of Fame Class 2008. Four territories of the AWA Superstars of Wrestling have broken away from AWA Superstars of Wrestling, however and joined with Championship Wrestling of Tennessee to create the American Wrestling Affiliates. Brian Logan took his championship reign and belt with him and Z Bisco is once again recognized as the AWA Superstars World Heavyweight Champion as AWA Superstars of Wrestling retroactively refused to recognize the title change. He dropped the title to Ricky Landell on October 11. In 2009, Full Impact Pro hired Z Bisco as the executive director of the FIP Championship Committee. Z Bisco competed at the Row Show on January 29 as a part of Wrestle Reunion 4 where he had a match with Scotty Too Hottie. In March 2010 Z Bisco started appearing at live events for the WFX Wrestling WFX in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Shortly after his debut, he was named the interim commissioner of the promotion and makes regular appearances. He competed in one match for the promotion thus far, teaming with Jesse Goddards, to compete against Bushwhacker Luke and Eugene Dinsmore. Z Bisco defeated Palmer Cannon for the All Out Mayhem Heavyweight Championship on November 20, 2010, in South Portland, Maine. In late March 2011, it was noted that Chris Jericho was very critical of Z Bisco and his announcing capabilities during his tenure in WCW in his latest book. When this was brought to his attention, Larry proceeded to challenge Jericho to say it to his face, and questioned his manhood in a popular internet video. Z Bisco stated in another video that the reason for Jericho's disrespect was because he could not use the phrase the living legend in the WWE because it has been used and trademarked by Z Bisco. On March 17, 2012, in Caribou, Maine Z Bisco defeated Ryan Michaels in a lumberjack match to retain the All Out Mayhem Heavyweight Championship. He would lose the title a month later to Gino Martino in Gray, Maine. Return to WWE, 2013 present. In April 2013, after attending the WWE Hall of Fame ceremony, he announced he had signed a WWE Legends contract along with recording interviews for the WWE Network and future DVD releases. He is a regular at NXT TV tapings in Orlando and has appeared at WrestleMania Access in recent years. On March 16, 2015, it was announced he would be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame Class of 2015. On March 28 he was inducted by his former mentor and rival Bruno Sammartino. Personal Life He married Kathleen Gagne, daughter of AWA co-founder Vern Gagne and sister of wrestler Greg Gagne, in 1988, and has a son who is also a professional wrestler, Tim Z. Bisco. He has three other sons, Michael, John, and Robert. Other Media Larry Z. Bisco's book, Adventures in Larry Land, was released on June 1, 2008. Zipsco has appeared in WWE 2K16, as DLC, and WWE 2K17 as a member of the Enforcers with Arn Anderson, and in WWE 2K18 without Anderson. Championships and Accomplishments